Hi, Luna. How's it going? Good. How, how are you doing, Joe? Good. You're not in the office today. Today you're in Panera, it looks like. <laughs> yeah. So I, um, I got up at 6 o'clock. I usually go to gym in the morning because it keeps it, me like energetic every day throughout the day. But I woke up. I got so many emails like from rental leads and from my boss. He, he wants me to send him like an update on my top 10 client list. And then also the three rentals that I'm working on. And it looks like I can close the deal. So he wanted me to send him like all the follow-ups and what's going on. So it, t it took me about like an hour to type everything out and then let him know what's going on, which is good because I, I have so many things going on. I kind of needed this summary for myself just to keep everything in order. So I did that. And then I have a showing at 12. I just don't feel like catch the traffic and drive to office at the moment. I think I'm just going to work at Panera. And then I will um, go do my showing, and then I'll go to the office later. I love working at Starbucks. Me too. It's just really crowded there. They all, all the time. There. You know. Oh. Um, bring in another thing. Have you ever heard of a co-working space? Mm -mm. For people who are listening, it's very popular. With people who work online, like like really high end bloggers and programmers. But if you're an agent where your office is convenient, so if you really like your brokerage and it's a great place to work, but it's just not geographically convenient, either for reason of traffic, you can get right. these things called co-working spaces where you rent a desk or you just have right. access to the office and it has um, internet, fax machines, telephones, everything you need to work. And some of them are really cheap. Oh, that's really cool. So some of you may want to look into that, or you may want to look into that, especially in Philly where traffic could be an issue because you have them all over the place in Philadelphia. Yeah. So you'd have a little pilot office, and they don't cost much at all. It's very oh. cheap. So instead of people like you and I camping at Starbucks or Panera, it's another option to think about. It's usually very mm -hmm. popular with techies, but also independent people like accountants, real estate agents, and other people who work you know, freely. Right. Like you do. Anyway, so that's that. So you got some news today. Yes. So a lot of things have happened in the past one week. I, um, I start to do a bunch of rentals, and I'm starting to getting more familiar with um, the real estate market in Center City, Philadelphia. So, you know, driving is like the way to help me learn different streets. And then I was showing homes. It helps me to learn like the structure of the home and how much rent it can produce. Cause I want to be able to work <coughs> with investors in the future. And I, I know what type of list, like I know what type of listing and you know, the clientele I want to be focusing on. So I have a goal, like I have a goal that which like the clients I want to be, you know, to, to target. So I, I just closed my, I wouldn't say closed, but like I just showed a client yesterday with rental that's $2,000 and it, it wasn't easy. I picked, I picked three places for him to see. It was according to the geographic where he likes and then, you know, the price that he's comfortable with. So we went to see the two ones that's like at the lower side of his budget. And then we are trying to go to the one that's 2000, which is the highest of his budget. So for some reason, I couldn't get in the building because I have issue opening the lockbox. Lockboxes. Lockboxes. A lot yeah, of comedy can be written about real estate agents issues with lockboxes. <laughs> and then also, like, it has different design. The lockbox is different. It's like, it, and the listing agent was telling me it's black, but I went to the building and it was blue. So I, I just don't know what to do. And I called the listing agent. It was the wife that picked up the phone. And she's like, oh, my husband is on a hike. He's not going to be back in an hour. And I'm like, I don't want to give up. Like, I have a feeling that this, my client really, really likes this place because there's a firework. And that's exactly what he's asking for. I don't want to give up. So he has a flight at 4 o'clock leading to Chicago. We're looking at the apartment at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So I was like, oh, my God. I was like, are you, do you have to check in? Like, do you have to check your bags? Like, is it going to take you long to go to the airport? Like, are you okay? Like, I don't want you to, you know, not be able to catch your flight. He's like, I'm fine. I was like, okay, well, do you mind just, you know, wait in the cafe for me? I have to run to my other appointment. And I'll be back in like 30 minutes. And he's like, sure, sure. So I went to my, like the other appointment. It was a couple blocks. I was literally physically running back and forth. Cause well, I don't you go to the like, gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that comes in handy. So I, I finished my appointment with the other person. And then I went back to him. And I, at the time, I was already on the phone with the listing agent because he's <coughs> already back from, um, from the hike so you know we figured everything out and then we went to 
take him to see this apartment. It was beautiful. It was it was this like old design home. Like it was all like like wood, and there was like the high tall like ceilings and big windows. He absolutely loved it. He like he loved it. it it's not selling a home, obviously, because it's a rental. But it feels the same. It's like you stick with one thing. You believe you can succeed. You know, if you stick with it, a lot of people would just give up. Like oh, it's too much of a hassle. Like you know. Ooh, it's a rental. Like、um, maybe he should just go because he's, he's running late for a flight. Like I just stick on with it, and then、right. he's like, "Oh my god, I, I want to take it." And he pulled out his checkbook. He's like, "So what's the application fee? I will just pay it right now." And I'm like, "Oh wow." Well, that's one of the difference to the rentals. Like rentals are much quicker, easier transaction. Right, and then you get paid a lot quicker too. Right, so that's one of the benefits. So he was ready to write it. Um, the other thing you talk about wanting to work with investments by working with the people who are rentals, you're、right. learning more about that market,、mm-hmm. which is a good way to do it. And、yeah. you, know, you get what you could get. People complain about not making money early on in real estate. Well, if that's the case, why would you turn away any deal, even if it's a small one? Right. Absolutely. I I'm doing rental at the at the moment, but I would never let a chance just leak away. Give you a little story. Last Friday, well, I went out with my girlfriends. So I work really hard on my career, like twenty four seven. But I do have social life, so I do go out once, a, like once a week. So we went to this really high fancy restaurant. It just recently opened in Philly. So we went to the restaurant, but they had to make us wait for the table. And、um, the manager came up and then tried to apologize to us. And I'm like. Hi, I want to introduce myself to this manager because in my head I was thinking if I'm going to be able to deal with a bunch of investors later on, I need a great spot. Like I need a high end, like a very nice restaurant that I take my client to all the time. That maybe we can talk or just a listing agent or someone who I work with, like a nice spot. You know what I mean? So I I try to introduce myself to the manager and tell him what I do, and then I said I really like a restaurant. I was trying to like compromise, you know how. Well maintained. This restaurant looks like, and then everything looks perfect. It has like a roof top. It was like open. Like the view was just amazing. He really likes like how I approach to him, and he can he can just tell what kind of person I am. So immediately he introduced me to the owner. Wow. So the owner, yes. Wait, wait for the best part. So、okay. the owner introduced you know him, and then we exchanged business card. I told him what to, what I do. He told me he's a developer. Wow.、So I was like, I was like, oh wow, that's really cool, you know. But I don't want to be so aggressive, be like, hey, you want to buy a house? Like, you want to buy, you know, piece of、um, the commercial building? Like, I don't want to approach him that way. So I was like, oh, cool. Like, so what have you done? Like, you know, what, what um, like, what do you like? What, like, what have you done? Have you purchased anything recently? And then he goes, I'm an investor and I'm constantly looking. So I was like, oh, great. So if let's say I have a piece of raw land, it was off market. I can send him the email. Just be like, hey, look, you can check this out, see if you like it or not. It's not aggressive. It's like me doing him a favor, you know. So it's just just a little story. Like I, I'm just in my head. I'm just going out to eat with my girlfriend. That's it. No, that's fantastic. But, And a lot of people say、right. I'm an investor. I'm constantly looking. I'm kind of full of it. But the fact that he's、right. the owner of the restaurant has some credibility there. So he has experience buying things. He runs a business. It's not just some schmo saying, "Oh, I'm an investor. I look at things. Show me around." You know. Yeah. I mean, he still may be a schmo. Who knows? But you know, so far <laughs> so good. So. I think he's really he's really nice. He、um, he seems like a very professional businessman. Right, and that's、like、what I mean. I mean, right there, if, if he's the owner of a restaurant, owning restaurants are not easy, especially、right. ones that work well. So、yeah. if he's doing that well, then you know. Right. And then also to my lady friends out there, I understand being as、um, female real estate agent sometimes it can be, how do I say it? You are constantly networking, but sometimes you might be giving people the wrong idea, like the wrong first impression when you approach people because you're like very friendly. You don't want them to get the wrong impression about you. So writing a line, a boundary line, is very important. So. L- I went to a pool party yesterday with my friends on the weekend as well. So I was, you know, networking. I was talking to people what I do. But there is a guy come across that he owns a bunch of restaurant, you know, downtown here, like downtown in Philly. But I just, I don't, I don't like the way how he approached back to me. And like, how do I say it? Like, I want him to know and understand. I am a very professional real estate agent. 
And I want to be able to let him know that I am a person that I can constantly offer him resources and value. I'm not just someone who wants to get something from him. I'm someone who can work with him as well. I can put him to in touch with someone that I know because I'm doing networking all the time. So I might be having someone who wants to partner with someone who has a restaurant. You never right. know, you know. So like that—that's my point. But if he can't see that, if he only was seeing something so shallow, then I can just cut it off because I don't need you. I'm constantly networking. I have so much more going on, and I can talk to other people. Like I don't need someone like you if you can't see my value. So right. that's kind of the boundary line I'm establishing to people, even though I'm really young. Like I know what I want, and if you can't see that, then I'm not gonna work with you at all. Right, but your use gets forgotten with your professionalism, as you said. Well, it's kind of also hard because I'm doing networking, but I was at a pool party. Right, so it's kind of a gray you know? line. So, in all fairness so to the guy, like who's... A, it's not like a good place to. Right, right, because I get it. You you don't want to give the guy the wrong impression, but at the same time, you're at a highly social event, so right. that person's mind right. is not on business. He's talking yeah. to you. He's socializing. Yeah. So I guess. Right. You are. You gotta draw a line. You also gotta be aware of the environment. Exactly. So, you know, I want to keep it real. So I want to let people know everything about me, what's going on, the good and the bad. I wouldn't say this is bad. I'm just saying this is something that come up, you know, like as you go through real estate business, like especially ladies, it's gonna come up. So things like that. Can I highlight something good? I believe you alluding to. Did sure. you get your first commission check? No. Well, I'm still waiting for this rental thing to go through because okay. this person has to get approved. So beside this deal, I also have two more deals. There is this girl. She really likes apartment, but she needs to figure out if she can move in August 1st rather than September 1st. So if I can tell her she can be able to move in August 1st, I can talk to the current tenant and figure out if they can leave sooner, then she will be able to take it. And how long and have you been a, in the area? Seven days. Seven days, and you already got like two deals, and one's looking pretty strong. Well, it's rental deals too. It's a it's deal. Not... It's a deal. Okay. It's right, a... right. Money's being exchanged, and money's gonna end up in your pocket, right? Yeah, and I'm constantly seeking opportunities for sales as well. Right. You know? So no, it's a deal. There are rental agents who make livings off that, especially when talking big cities. Um, early in my career, I did a deal in Los Angeles where they rented for $25,000 a month. And I was blown away. And if you do the math on that, that's the same as like a small condo. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And it was 25000 for a month? Right. And it was some guy who was young. And I was just like, I wasn't doing anything. I was sitting at the front desk just waiting for people to come in. I wasn't doing anything else. Everybody said, don't right. work with them. It's a rental. It's a waste of time. And I walked around with him. Turned out he had a lot of money. His dad was uh -huh. the owner of a pretty well-known company, and now he's a big business guy. And he ended up renting this place in the Hollywood Hills for twenty-five thousand really dollars cool. a month. So you don't know, and especially when you're in yeah. big cities like Los Angeles and Philadelphia, some of these rentals could be extremely, extremely lucrative. I mean, in That's smaller true. suburban areas, the rentals have ceilings, but in big cities, you know. When you get people for different reasons, big business people, companies coming in. Right. I'm not saying you want to focus on rentals. I'm just saying it's not the worst thing. You've been there seven days and you got to deal through it. And like I said, I'm money's money. It, it, it's more about the learning experience. Like you get into a building, you see different buildings. So if you ever come, come across with a buyer, you know what they're looking for. You know if it's practical or if it's not practical and if you're talking to investors do you know how much cash flow a building can produce every single month because you're doing a rental so, right because like, you're looking at the other side the investor looks at how much you can produce with a tenant right. you're doing the same numbers because you're looking to see if this is a good deal for your tenant yeah and you're saying they're charging a crazy amount or they're not so you're doing you're working the same numbers you're getting the same education so it's good and like i said at the end of the day it's going to be money isn't that the point that's one of the points. One of, sorry, that's not all the points. Oh, not all the points. You don't, you don't <laughs> want money. I forgot. Never mind. I want money. I just, it's not <laughs> all about money. Like, obviously, I do want money. Everybody wants money. Yes. Okay, Rainbow Bright. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yes, but it'll be your first deal. Right. And you've only been there yeah, seven days. It's incredible. And I, I think it interrupted you when you said you had a third one on the, on the, 
on the oven as well. So the third one is a friend of mine. Actually, he got a job at a、um, the suburb area. He's looking for a apartment.、So、I was like, obviously, I need to help you. So I've been contact with different apartment complexes. Some of the apartment complexes don't offer commission. So I make sure I call each one of them. If the ones that doesn't offer commission, I'll just let him go by himself. But if the ones that does offer, then I'll go with him. That's very honorable. So that's of you. the plan. That's good. Think, so a lot of agents wouldn't show at all. You're just saying like they don't、well, want to work. Well, he's a friend too. Right, he's right. A friend. Well, hopefully you do that for everybody. You know, just in the spirit of honesty. I did do that for everybody. Right, right. I mean, it's because the apartment complex says we don't work with real estate、yeah. agents. You say, hey, they don't work. Want to work with me? That's fine. But I still want you to see it. Go check it out. Usually, when I tell not even my friends, I run into another guy who I showed apartment to. So he ended up sending me similar listings. Because I told him to, I was like, send me some of the listings, see if I can help you schedule some of the showings, and then I can go with you. But later on, I find out a lot of the apartment complexes, especially in Center City, doesn't give out commission. So I call this guy. He's he he he's now kind of a friend to me now because he really appreciate what I do for him. Good. So he's like, yeah. So he's like,、um, Luna, I don't want you to do anything for me. Go out of your way if you're not getting paid for this. That's his own word. So he's like, I'll go by myself. I can schedule. It's fine. Because I schedule the showing for him, and then there are a couple ones. Like, there are two more that I left. I didn't call, so he said he can do it on his own because he doesn't want to waste my time. Because I'm not getting compensated by any of this. Right. So, so with that being said, it sounds like it's been a busy week and things are getting better real fast. And you're doing things. So,、mm-hmm. next week let's talk about how somebody gets paid on commission. We talked about it a little bit. But next week we'll、right. actually calculate the numbers between getting paid on a、um, excuse me, paid on commission, getting paid on a lease versus getting paid on a sale. Sure. Because we've mentioned we've alluded a lot to the numbers, but I think a lot of people watch us and wonder like, okay, so what are the numbers? Right. What the、yeah. difference is. So next week we'll do that. In the meantime, remember to subscribe to Luna's channel. I have the link below. Okay. And we'll talk soon, right? Sounds good. Okay. Yes. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.